But there was something I did before uh, the sheriff got there. I got on my knees. And I prayed, Lord, I am really messed up this time. You're going to have to help me. And you know, I really believe I became born again at that time. But I refused to go to church. So I'm sitting up in Moab, and my, they call my step parents to come get me. So they come and get me, and I'm up in the center of the mountains. I'm giving um, fellow brothers. I'm getting them up in the middle of the night, and I'm having them say, um, walking through the, the Lord's Prayer. And um, I'm making sure they can say, well, I'm bothering my step-parents, my step-mom and her husband so much that they decided that um, they'll flush all my vitamins, thinking they're drugs, but they were vitamins, and telling me, you know, I can't be doing this, can't be causing all this records in the house. So I said, okay, so I left. I didn't know where I was going to go. Now I'm 23, I don't have a job, I don't have anything, I have not me, I'm just me and God. Jesus is with me. So I go down to the beach, and my friends will put me up. Well, they did for about a week. So um, I'm kind of walking around and going down the street. Think I can live with you? I don't know. Got any money? Well, yeah, got a check gun. Okay, you know what I mean. So I live with two or three people that way, kind of got settled. And, uh, now, why could all this be? When I get born in and get saved, Jesus going to help me or not? No, nope, still not going to church. But you know, five years went by. So I can understand you guys when you say you're born again, and you know Jesus, but you're not going to church. We all have our reasons sometimes we're not going to church. I have mine. And I'm so, but when, you know, circumstances are working themselves around, again, kind of the same way, you know, how to do that. It was a Friday, my boss gave me a three-day ship up for a ship up. So I go home. Well, I can't tell my boyfriend because he plays drugs and he's not a cook and hot I want. I've been doing that for about a year. But um, I really like the job. So maybe I should go to church. Uh, I'll call Amy, see what she says, and call her. No, she's watching the kids go. No, I'll call someone's mom. No answer. I tell you, I can call anybody. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at my dresser, and I'm looking at this Bible up there I've got home. And I'm going to work five years in a year. And I think that movie, when the Bible tells little Shirley Temple, he says, What? <coughs> Well, it's in 7 o'clock, the mission will open 9 o'clock, the Baptist Church by Street, which will put it into, oh, made it to the Baptist Church. And uh, two weeks later, got water baptized. Yay, I'm on my way. Well, from that point, I've got to tell you, I've had a lot of loss in my life, but I've had a lot of restoration. The daughter, 1992, I live here. I get a phone call. Someone on the other side, the other end says, are you still looking for your daughter? I don't know. Well, we think we found her. Okay. You know, in 15 minutes, she was calling me. Do you wear glasses? Yeah. Are you colorblind? No. But my son and my dad are. Because I am too. And a month later, we raised enough money for him to come here. And Rush and Shoot did an interview, and my church, it's Tori Morris from New Beginnings, and his wife came to see her. And, uh, about eight microphones in, in our base at the airport. And I take her down the street for her to 
watch my sonny's little trick show outside during the summer. And on the way home, she said, you know, those kids made me cry. I don't know why I'm doing that. Well, I'm not going to tell you about how far later, because Troy and Stacy and Venice at the door, they let her to know her. So I'm going to tell her how I made her birthday dad let her down. Maybe her adopted dad let her down. But I had my dad let her down. And uh, I was happy to, um, to share before she went to the airport at church that she came to the I haven't taken the home like I like a wood, but I'm still praying. Well, I also have a son whose name is Jordan. We do believe that him and Vicky were both born or both had the same due date, 17 years apart. So God does restore. So I never knew what happened past my house. But I did feel the wrong too. The wrong way. Another repeat. And uh, the guy got together with Jordan, Jordan's dad. We met. When we had a man went down on the beach, we went to Chino prison to visit my cousin, David Burmage. And um, his cellmate was sitting there, and it happened to be his birthday. I said, okay, this is me. I was me, you know, in church. And he didn't even let us know that it was his birthday until we were at the game. So we told him, well, that's really neat, because your mom couldn't make it, and your dad wouldn't take you to that call. So Jesus sent us every birthday. And guess what? About two weeks later, I went to the bathroom, and I had to raise his legs, and I'm thinking, well, there was just nothing wrong right here. I just did not say that. No bone rings. Well, I hadn't answered it up to that point. I kept writing on it and moving in. And I'll, okay, I'll just see who it is. And he goes, hi, my name is Anzo, and I didn't call. I, honestly, I didn't call. I don't have your number, but um, David put me on the phone. He dialed. Because you left me a letter, and you said to read the story about Joseph. I said, no, you know what? I'm supposed to read the story about Joseph. And we became friends, and we broke, and he got out, and we got together, and we had a son. And three days before I got out, I found, he found, due to a lack of stamps, he wasn't divorced, we couldn't get married. Oh, my God, oh, gracious. So, we moved on, we went to Dallas had everything arranged, there was a church, and his work, and some family on the other end. We told everyone we're married. Well, we weren't, but we told everyone we were. And uh, when we came back here, and the oil field picked up again, about 90, about 85, and uh, it didn't work. We tried for about a year and a half. And I knew the day he left that I was going to raise Jordan Long until I was 18. I knew that. And I, I can't tell you how, but it came to pass. Ron took off to Florida and uh, wanted to come back. About halfway, he called from Texas. He says, ma'am, I can't make it. Can you send bus money? I said, okay. So um, I sent him the rent money, thinking he'd come back, we'd get it together. Well, he didn't. He left again. And on the day, I was looking at a 30-day, and I was looking at a three-day eviction. It's kind of like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do now? I got a baby, and I'm going to be evicted. What do I do? Well, he told me what to do. He said, call the pastor that you and Ron went to, and, and you tell him that you, you weren't married. Tell him the truth. I go, okay, I can do that. So I called the pastor, and I told him the story, and I told him we were not married while we were there. We lied to you. 
And here's my problem. I need $758 like today. Do you know that week was the biggest offering they'd ever had? They'd been here for five years at that time. And it was a check for $758. And I moved to a song or whatever. Well, on to God, and he was gone for 20 years. 15 years, eh? And uh, still doing drugs, no support of any kind. And I get a phone call, and he says, Well, I quit doing drugs. I'd like to know if you'd take me to church. I said, I can do that. And I took him to church. A couple of years go by. He's still drinking. And he was shouldn't do this. Should not do this. So I let him go. <laughs> he went back to Oklahoma. Got a job with Swift. But I missed him. I mean, people kept telling me that this is what you wanted. This is what you needed for. I called him and I said, I want you to ask me to marry you one more time. So I can say yes. So for the fourth time, in 25 years, he asked me to marry him, and I said yes. And um, we tried to work it out, and it didn't work out, and that's okay, because my son got a father that um, he didn't know, and I got a friend. So what I'm trying to tell you in all of this, from the time I stood up here and told you about a stroke six months ago, I told you about living on the floor with some friends, in the meantime, the Lord has given me a house, built with furniture. For I can do what I believe God called me to do a long time ago. I used to stay up all night preaching sermons. And how many of you are going to stand on a flatbed on the street corner? What am I going to do? Well, I'm doing it. I'm doing it on my own backward. That bed, and I'm standing on the sidewalk some day. And it's all I've ever really wanted to do. And I've kind of went around the mountain 40 times. But 